What's up, you beautiful bastards? Hope you've had a fantastic Monday. Welcome back to the Philip DeFranco Show, and let's just jump into it. The first thing we're gonna talk about today was one of the most requested stories from over the weekend, and that is the, the craziness around DJ Khaled. DJ Khaled describes himself on his Instagram as a father, a mogul, an icon. I personally remember him as the guy that yells his name in songs and once got lost on a jet ski in the ocean. It's so dark out here. We don't know where the hell we at, but the key is to make it. The main reason people were talking about Khaled over the weekend is that a clip from a 2014 interview that he did went viral. Here it is. I believe a woman should um, praise the man, you know, the king. You know, if you if you holding it down for the, for your woman, I feel like the woman should praise, and and the man should praise the queen. But you know, my way of praising is called <laughs> how was dinner. Um, you like the house you're living in, you like all them clothes you're getting, I'm taking care of your family, I'm taking care of my family, you know, putting in the work. So you're saying like, you don't go down? Yeah. Nah, never. All of that to say you don't go down? Come Cal on. You don't eat the box? Nah, Come on, I Khaled. Oh, oh, you don't eat no box? Nah, I thought that's what nah. Hold You Down was about. Nah, well, I don't. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, never I, in life, or did nah, you try it and didn't nah, like the taste? I, I don't do that. I don't do that. I don't. Not even like for her birthday. Nah, listen. Christmas. She get. She get. She get geez, geez, I put in that work. My my work is great. You know what I'm saying? Like I do my. Well, thing. So now if she told you she don't do that, is that okay? I'm nah. It's not okay because <laughs> because you know what I'm saying. I'm and confused. It, so because, you gotta understand. I'm the dawn. I'm the king. You know what I'm saying? And she's Everybody's the, queen. the king of that house, huh? She's the queen. Of course. So I don't do that. Yeah. It's not fair. It's different rules for men. You know what I'm saying? You know, you gotta understand, like, you know, we we um we, we you know, we the king. You know what I'm saying? So we you know there's some things that y'all might not wanna do or wanna do, it gotta get done. You know what I'm saying? I just can't do what you want me to do. <laughs> I just can't. Okay. And the reaction from most of the internet was, dude, what? The main takeaway is being that Khaled was promoting extreme double standards as far as men and women in relationships. People also angry because it seemed like he was just, he was holding the house and food and money over his wife's head. And everyone was sounding off on this, so much so that The Rock, who is one of the most PG family friendly individuals out there, he tweeted, ahem, clears throat. As a man, I take great pride in mastering all performances. This is probably a little TMI. I will now quietly excuse myself from this fun thread. And it's Actually, tweets like that on top of you know the the double standard that a lot of people are kind of angry about. It's tweets like that one from The Rock that I think that's what really gave this story legs. That clip going viral gave so many men the ability to go like, hey, have you seen this? I can't believe he's like that. I love it. Some people say I'm like the best at it. Like, I'll just do it for fun. Anyway, how you doing? Also, looking at the situation, I, I think DJ Khaled could have just could have avoided a lot of shit if he's just like, I don't like to do it. End of story. But when he kept referencing himself as the king, the don, then saying there are different rules for men and women. That's that's just stupid. Right, and obviously, even if we don't want to be overt about it, there is something about seeing a, a person that looks like DJ Khaled being like, nah, that sounds icky. I would never do that, but yeah, they got to do that to me. And ultimately, I have, I have two final thoughts when it comes to this story. The, the first being that I don't personally care what DJ Khaled does in his personal life. But the promotion of this idea that it is somehow disgusting or unmanly to go down on a woman is ridiculous. Right, the idea that only one of you in the relationship should get pleasure the way that you want it is fucking stupid. And two, I think maybe DJ Khaled's just ignorant on the topic. I've seen a lot of people in the past week fat shaming DJ Khaled, saying things along the lines of, oh, now he's choosy about what he puts in his mouth. But if you're a fan of the show Hot Ones, you know that DJ Khaled wimped out after just three wings. I promise you if I stop, doesn't mean I gave up. <laughs> yes, it does. Mm -mm. By definition. I ain't give up because you, did, you did kind of did. And on the note of not wanting to fat shame DJ Khaled, on the note of, of wanting to support him on his weight loss adventure, if you don't know, he is actually an ambassador for Weight Watchers. Maybe he doesn't know. It's zero points, Khaled. All day, every day. It's one of the only things you could eat after 9 p.m. and you don't have to feel bad about it in the morning. But that said, if you still don't want to try it, that said, you, your wife is fine with not receiving that. What I would ask of you though is to stop spreading stupid bullshit like someone who is different than you is not deserving of the same thing as you because of that difference. But yeah. That's where I'm gonna end that one. But from that, I wanna share some stuff I love today and today in Awesome brought to you by Dbrand. Dbrand, of course, fantastic place to get awesome skins for most any device you'd want one on. And the most recent device they have embraced are their badass Switch skin. It took them a while because they had to figure out an adhesive solution. They wanted to make sure if we do this, we do it right. And so they finally launched them for the Nintendo Switch. They are guaranteed not to damage your device. Go to DeFrancoSwitch.com, check out their Switch exclusive materials. You can grab your Joy-Con skins for under $5 or a two-pack of tempered glass for your console for under $10 with free 
free global shipping on orders over $20. Also, after you go to francoswitch.com or click the link in the description down below, you get your skin. Tweet a picture of the finished product because you guys have been coming up with combinations I wasn't even thinking of before. And the first bit of awesome today is if you are not one of the 19 plus million people that saw it over the weekend, I highly recommend at least a one-time watch of Childish Gambino's new video, This Is America. And obviously it's a song, but I say the video because that's that's where you really get the full experience of it. With this video, I think Donald Glover gave us something that, I mean, it, it's, it's a piece of art. It's something that is open to interpretation. I have some friends that were angry at Donald Glover because there, there was gun violence in the video. Some who didn't like it saying that they thought it was anti-Second Amendment, where I personally took it as a social commentary of how he views America right now. And even here, I'm just gonna talk about what's one layer deep. There are, there are layers on top of layers in this video. But one of the ways I interpreted the video is you have these, these horrible acts of violence. And then the next thing you see is not a resolution to the situation, but then Donald Glover dancing, a bunch of kids just copying him. Meanwhile, there's all this chaos and horrible shit that's happening in the background that's not really getting the attention it deserves. And once again, that's just one surface level thing. I, I've been loving just people kind of like picking out a single thing and going into why it matters, or what Donald Glover was trying to get across. And I also just wanted to make sure I shared this video because for some reason, even though the song is This Is America and it's been trending in most every country other than America, it ended up not trending in America and instead these two videos that had under a million views were trending. It's strange because you think that if YouTube thought it was inappropriate, it would be inappropriate everywhere, not just the United States. Whatever. Then we had Mr. Zcon giving us Robert Downey Jr. versus Robert Downey Jr. We also got the official season five trailer for Arrested Development, the season two trailer for Luke Cage, the slow-mo guys giving us rainbow paint on a speaker at 12,500 frames per second. Insider showed us how Michael B. Jordan's Black Panther makeup was done, which if we're being honest, is just a thinly veiled video on, hey, do you want to just see Michael B. Jordan's body internet? And in general, the internet responded, that's such a stupid question, I already hit the link. And if you want to see the full versions of everything I just shared, the secret link of the day, anything at all. All links, as always, are in the description down below. Then, as promised, we have updates to the Poppy lawsuit story I last covered on Friday. That lawsuit coming from Britney Sheets, AKA Mars Argo. Some of the main allegations in that lawsuit are that Poppy and her creative partner, Titanic Sinclair, essentially copied Mars Argo. There's a past relationship there, which also connects to the other main allegation, that Titanic Sinclair was abusive, that there was domestic violence. We have two main updates on this story. The, the first being in regards to the deleted tweets. There are people online alleging that Titanic Sinclair was deleting tweets that may have been connected to this case. According to the numbers on Social Blade, it looked like Titanic Sinclair did delete tweets. Titanic said that he did not. And according to Social Blade, who he contacted, what might have happened is that because Titanic retweets a lot of Poppy tweets, because the Poppy account deleted just under 2,000 tweets, they say this was for a promotional event, anyone who retweeted those now deleted tweets would look like on the back end that they also deleted tweets. And the other big update is that Poppy released a statement saying Miss Sheets and her attorneys did not contact us before filing the lawsuit to discuss her accusations of copyright infringement and domestic violence. All of which are false, saying it would appear Ms. Sheets was intent on building a publicity campaign around her filing of a complaint. Also adding it has been very painful to read the lawsuit Ms. Sheets filed and to see the word abuser and my own name in the same sentence. Something very few people know is that one of the reasons I work the way I work and why I have made such efforts to conceal my identity is because I have my own history as a survivor of abuse. This legally documented trauma from my past is something I never wanted to make public because I did not want to relive it. Ms. Sheets' publicity campaign has made that impossible. And then on top of that, Poppy alleges that there's, there's an even deeper connection to Britney Sheets than we knew before. Saying, I have known Miss Sheets for years and she is well aware of the anguish I went through. In an attempt to manipulate me psychologically, Miss Sheets is now collaborating and maintaining an ongoing relationship with the exact man who took advantage of me when I was young and vulnerable, while at the same time naming me in a lawsuit with allegations of domestic abuse. It is shameful that Miss Sheets would try to exploit another female artist in this way for personal gain, out of nothing more than bitterness and a desperate grab for fame. Miss Sheets' claims of stalking, harassment, and abuse directed at Mr. Mixter are preposterous projections of her own actions. My creative partner is blameless and I am confident this case will be dismissed. I look forward to the coming days when I can speak in greater detail about my personal journey, one that Miss Sheets is well aware of. And following that, she tweeted this picture showing her and Mixter seeking protection from a man by the name of Joshua Michael Moran. And as far as who that is, it appears that he is a singer-songwriter. He's the former lead singer of several bands, including Great Big Plains, New York Rivals, and Sun Drones. Also around the same time, Poppy tweeted out a video that allegedly shows Moran and Mixter sitting down to talk and then claims that this is Moran attacking Mixter. And Moran appears to have since responded on his Twitter, saying Mariah, aka Poppy's statements are false, saying the restraining order against Mixter was denied, the order of protection filed by Poppy dismissed, saying that the reason for this was that there was no truth to any of the allegations, calling this a desperate ploy to detract from their own pending legal issues, which I have nothing to do with, claiming I haven't spoken to these people in like three years. They made sensationalized claims about me years ago that were rightfully found to be untrue. I had my day in court, I was completely clear. I wasn't charged with a crime, nor was I ever contacted by the police. The accusations by Poppy are just flat out lies. These people have caused a lot of harm to me. I've taken the high road and moved on. I ask you to please see the truth and leave me be. And so as of right now,
right now, that is where we are with this story. And I want to pass the question off to you. Is this response, this this update and information, does it, does it make you feel differently about the story, the same? I'd love to know your thoughts and why in those comments down below. Then let's talk about the update around the Edubirdy situation we talked about Friday. A story broke that there were over 250 channels on YouTube that were promoting a service called Edubirdy. It's an essay writing service that many of the YouTubers were advertising like this. If you guys are struggling in school or college, check out edubirdy.com to hire a super smart guy to do your essays for you. Super smart geek. Plagiarism free. Did y'all hear me? They're helping you cheat. You won't get in any troubles, guaranteed. That it's gonna get you an A plus. The BBC is saying their investigation found over 1,400 videos with these adverts in the video and they received over 700 million views. And so of course the story became there are hundreds of YouTubers that are actively promoting cheating to their audiences. Well, it appears that YouTube wasted almost no time after this report came out and deleted hundreds of videos. And this ended up angering a lot of those YouTubers. Some YouTubers, like one by the name of Patty Mayo, saying that they were going through the process of editing out the adverts, when boom, YouTube removed their videos. Also, according to BBC, when speaking to Patty, he said he does not endorse or condone cheating, which many people found strange because in his video, he, he actually says, hire the super smart nerds at edubirdy.com to write your essays and your papers for you, which some people say sounds like an endorsement for cheating. Now, as far as YouTube, they will not say how many videos they removed. They did say in a statement, YouTube creators may include paid endorsements as part of their content only if the product or service they are endorsing complies with our advertising policies. Adding, we do not allow ads for essay writing and so paid promotions of these services will be removed when we discover them. We will be working with creators going forward so they better understand that in video promotions must not promote dishonest activity. And if you go to YouTube's restricted products page, academic aids is right at the top saying, advertising is not permitted for academic aids. This includes quote, test taking services in which someone takes an exam for someone else and academic paper writing services providing customized slash pre-written thesis, dissertations, etc. Also Boosto, which is the company that runs Eduberti released a statement saying, we cannot be held responsible for what social influencers say on their channels. We give influencers total freedom on how they prefer to present the Edubirdy platform to their audience in a way they feel would be most relevant to their viewers. We do admit that many tend to copy and paste each other's shout outs with a focus on get someone to do your homework for you. But this is their creative choice. Edubirdy seems to be throwing a lot of people under the bus there. And in addition to that, they have reportedly now added a disclaimer on their website suggesting work provided by Edubirdy was supplied only as a sample or a reference. And as far as how this situation breaks down to me, it really seems seems like the only people being screwed here are the YouTubers. Because while I may not agree and I, and I greatly dislike someone promoting cheating in that way, they're the ones having parts of their archive taken down. Meanwhile, Edubirdy, if anything, most likely succeeds even more because of this. Essay writing services themselves are not technically illegal. It's that when you take someone else's work and you turn it in as your own, that's where you might have to face consequences. Once again, it's the person turning it in, not Edubirdy. And thanks to this story getting a lot of traction, th this is essentially a ton of free press for them. It's not like the person that would use an essay writing service is like, oh man, I don't like their advertising practices. And it wouldn't be shocking to me, even though part of the story involved the subpar grades people that use the service got, if Edubirdy has been making way more money than normal since this story first broke. But that's where we are now, and that's how the situation has broken down. The question I wanna pass off to you is, do you think that YouTube did the right thing here by removing these videos? Yes, no. Also, if yes, do you, do you think that maybe the creator should have had more time? Or no, because the longer that these infringing videos remain up, the more likely it is that YouTube's just gonna get reamed in the press, and thus they and the creators would be hurt. Any and all thoughts here, share them with me. And then let's talk about the volcano situation in Hawaii, specifically Hawaii's big island. The Kilauea volcano in Hawaii erupted last Thursday and blew ash and poisonous gas into the air. Reportedly, the crater floor had actually begun collapsing last Monday, which pushed magma into new underground chambers. And Hawaii's governor, David Ige, made an emergency proclamation. He deployed the National Guard to assist in evacuation. Then on Friday, there were multiple earthquakes, including a 6.9 magnitude one, which is actually the strongest earthquake to hit the island since 1975. And after the earthquakes, pink smoke could be seen pouring out of the volcano. We saw fissures forming on the ground. The latest reports say there have been 10 new ones since the eruption started. We also saw lava fountains, and according to the U.S. Geological Survey, some of the lava was shooting 330 feet into the air. And what's really interesting is as this progresses, it could even get higher. And one of the reasons for this is as the lava hardens, where it's shooting out, it can result in the openings being smaller, which then lends itself to more pressure and then can launch further. Also, as of recording this video, according to Hawaii Civil Defense, 35 structures have been destroyed so far. We've also seen Hawaii hit by Temblers, these usually light earthquakes that cause little damage. They have continuously been hitting the island. There were reportedly 18 Temblers between 6 p.m. Sunday
Sunday night and midnight and another one this morning. And unfortunately, that's not even the worst thing about this situation. Experts are saying that the greater risk to public health is the gases that are being released, not the lava, which has been relatively slow moving. And if you're in Hawaii and you're like, well, don't worry, I've got some masks. Depending on where you got them, most likely they're not going to help you. The Hawaii Department of Health actually warning the public that no commercially sold masks will protect them from the poisonous gases from a volcano. Now, the good news is that as of right now, there are no fatalities or major injuries that have been reported. But the bad news is that this may go on for a while. Past eruptions have lasted for months, sometimes years, and there's no way to really tell how long this episode will last. The closest you can really get to that is right now you have geologists saying that the activity surrounding the eruption closely resembles the events around the 1955 eruption. And that one lasted three months. Where I want to end this one, I know it's just words, but my thoughts out to everyone affected by this. I, I hope this ends sooner rather than later. And also to everyone out there, please be safe that they are having to issue warnings for people putting themselves in needless danger. Just don't. I don't want anything to happen to your beautiful faces. And that's where I'm going to end today's show. And remember, if you liked this video, you like what I'm trying to do on this channel, hit that like button if you do, or hit that subscribe button, ring that bell to turn notifications on. Also, if you missed the last Philip DeFranco show, you want to catch up, click or tap right there to watch that. Or if you want to watch today's brand new behind the scenes vlog, click or tap right there to watch that. But that said, of course, as always, my name's Philip DeFranco. You've just been filled in. I love yo faces and I'll see you tomorrow.